Invisible Sniper. Uh, somewhere northeast. Keep moving sa mga buildings, take over. Pero expect na meron pang striker. Copy, copy. Alright, we'll leave the M-Rap here. It's too risky to get the knife. I'm taking it. I took shot. Sniper. Ah, uh, I need a medic on me. Medic on me. Take the left one on left, left, alley, left, alley, left, main highway. Oh, where's the, where's my medic? Right, north side is clear. Copy, copy, sir. Put the wind on me. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Radio RPP, the Philippines' first tactical gaming podcast. Here with you today are your hosts, Papa Sand and Bean. What's up? What's up? What's up, guys? And uh, tonight, we have uh, three beautiful guests with us today. Uh, we got a uh, fan favorite, Raziel14. You may know him from last episode. Uh, we got our RPP's own mission curator, Han Solo. Say hi. Yo, what's up, guys? And one of our newest additions to the RPP community, Panther 404. So, so hey. anyways, we'll give you a little bit of a rundown on what the RPP is, uh, the RPP, Radio RPP is about, because uh, some of you may be watching for the first time. So, maybe, Bean, you want to give them an idea on what we do around here? Yes, so Radio RPP is the podcast for Rally Point Pilipinas, the premier, <laughs> I love saying that, the premier tactical gaming community of the Philippines. We are the guys that want to bring tactical gaming up, way up into the Filipino gaming sphere. So, Sali na kayo, please come on, stop playing Valorant, guys. <laughs> that sucks. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and today we are going to be talking about the one, uh, one of the points that make us very different from the games that your friends usually play. And that is military simulation operations in game. Mhm. Mm yep, we got a lot of those right here in RPP and we have and we have with us today people who are responsible for creating and playing said ops and uh We'll be picking their brains tonight and uh, try to get in the mind of the people who play tactical games. And what? And uh, hopefully uh, tonight you can see for yourself what you can expect if you want to join us in our games. So let's start off, Muna, with... All right, guys, before we start with the questions, um, can you tell us what, you, what, what, what pops up into your mind when you, we say the word Milsim Op? Well, the phrase mills him up. Uh, let's start with let's start with our veteran Raz. <laughs> He's been playing tactical games since he was born. Wow, well, not <laughs> so born, but yeah. Um, back to the question. Thinking what uh, mills him up is you expect uh, coordination. Theme is usually uh, your typical. Uh, how do you put this military fanfare? You've got people in uniforms with the gear. There's an objective. There's a mission briefing. So essentially, preparation. There is more preparation when you go for mil sim operations, uh, to put it simply. How about you, Hans? What do you think? Yeah, I I I, I agree with you, Raz. Um, uh, mil mil sim games are we we can base them from like movies or. Uh, events that happen in real life so we we kind of re replicate those kinds of scenarios in through the games that we play yes yeah, so you don't need to uh, actually go to the middle east to experience uh, <laughs> military ops yeah. and yeah. die yeah. So hey, what about you panther mostly mostly ops um, like basically realism and trying to relive what some people do but you're not going to go die <laughs> in real life. That's, that's the best part, right? You know, you yeah, can have all not the, all dying the thing. Not yeah. dying. Please don't die. <laughs> anyway, so uh, let's get a let's get a head start with yeah. um, talking about ops curation because you know when you don't, when you have ops, it all comes from the source of somebody's brain, and that kind of sets the scene of how well it will run or how well it will you know 
pan out for the players on the field because you know a well planned op is something that um you know gets people people's blood pumping and you know yeah, adrenaline it takes a lot of brain power yeah, it does. to so, set it up uh hans you know you've been curating ops for you know rpp even before rpp and when we were still branded a squad philippines so uh, i'd like to ask you the first question what fuels your creativity when crafting top tier squad milsim ops like up green zone because and if you I'll, I'll put the link down in the description below to Hans's edit of that uh op he curated and that was one of the most fun ops yeah played dude. As, as a group of you know squad players it kind of got everyone's blood pumping wanting more and that's when we kind of dropped out of the scene <laughs> because we couldn't be, we couldn't afford to keep the server up and running and it was just so yeah. difficult so like uh, just let's... to add to that real quick, um it was the most fun I've had driving a truck in game so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the yeah. the right, so truck ahead. simulator in squad. So you know, like yeah. you get all these cool ass maps and so Hans, what 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 goes through oh, yeah. your mind when you try to make these scenarios for people, you know, like to enjoy actually, actually what I what I imagine is I, I like to create a movie. Uh, similar to what Black Hawk Down, um uh 13 hours. Oh, is it, was that 13? 13 hours, yeah. 13 hours yeah. in Bigazi. Yeah. Yeah. Those uh, movies inspire me to make or create ops um, that for people to enjoy. Like, for example, on Green Zone, uh, I want, um, I plan to create it as a, uh, a saga. Uh, three episodes. So, first one is um, Operation Green Zone. So, Operation Green Zone. Um, the U.S. faction needs to supply some, uh, supply give supplies on the green zone area for military assets to, you no, know, um, continue operations. Gonna continue, yeah, operations. continue operations. Um, so what I plan to do on the second episode is because all the supplies were so, are already given on green zone, so. On the on the next episode, I'm I'm planning to um have it a la- a last stand. So, uh, hopefully you guys can join soon. Um, hopefully it's next weekend. Uh, we'll plan it. We'll have the ops on the next weekend. So what it's what's gonna happen is it's gonna be a last stand because um all the U.S. forces will stay on green zone, and I I want it to be all insurgents to to use all assets assets except the tank and i want them to destroy the radio inside green zone until it gets bleed out for us and third third episode would be um evac so it's going to be the truck simulation again so mm-hmm. Uh, you'd say that uh, an important part of curating ops like this is to have like a story or an intention in mind, diba? Parang when I go into this, parang my continuity, just in case it kicks off. Diba? Oh yeah, Tama yeah, ba, definitely. Diba? Definitely, yeah. Because um, I'm I'm pretty sure that people will enjoy it. Because uh, if you watch movies, everyone you you can see it. Uh, with people you, with people who who you are who 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 are, who, who are interested in it with you. Yeah, yeah, who are interested. And yeah, you yeah, find yeah. A, you find a group of people who who like to watch these things, and you kind yeah, of like, yeah. immerse immersion. Kumbaga, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. minded mill simps. Yeah. Uh, so that's what um, fuels my mind on creating ops. Is basically just getting inspired from movies. Mm. That's, that's and, uh, perfect. That's a good. So thing. like. When you're like, you're saying like there, uh, you want it to be like a movie, right? So when you're watching a movie, but the conclusion, there's like something welling up in you, right? Now, compare the feeling of satisfaction when you finish a movie with describe the feeling of pulling through with a successful scenario where you know everyone that you invited to join the op, you know, ends up enjoying the ride. How, how does that feel for you? Like when people are saying, "Oh my God, that was a fucking cool op." Uh, I wish we get more of these. I, uh, where's when's the next one? I mean, maraming ganon, right? Every time yeah. we finish an op, how does uh, that feel for you as a mission curator? 
Yeah, it feels it feels really good. It feels good, especially getting those good feedbacks uh, from everyone. Uh, it inspires you to create more ops, and it keeps it keeps you going. Oh, it's like a, this going. is why this is why we play. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It's like you, you get know, like people, a lump in your throat. People, you know, yeah. <laughs> I think the that. best the best part because I hands the ball. Like you and I can agree that. When people think of Milsim games, kasi, they think of Arma as a sandbox, diba? and uh, us yeah. we're limited. We're limited by the the environment of uh, or the the engine of how squad is run. So diba? it's a bit more complicated to run yeah, ops yeah. because of our limitations of commands, controls, uh, spawns, and everything. Uh, yeah, so I really, yeah, I guess agree with you when you say that you know, there's a, a bit of a satisfaction to it when you successfully run things. Because of that limitation of of uh, squad squads and mm-hmm. squads gameplay, yeah. so what can you say about that? What can you say about the yung limitations mo? Like how how do you find your way around? Like having squad as your canvas instead uh, okay. of you know something yeah. more sandboxy like armor. Arma, uh-uh. I think um in making an op, you have to be flexible on you have to be familiar on how people play, so you have to put point persons or a key persons to to do some specific roles. For example, I I got Raz to command on Operation Greed Zone and Yezono. So I I know how they play and how they do how do how they strategize. So I just simply told them what are their objectives and what you can do, what you can't do and just have fun. Just be natural and yeah, I wanted I wanted people to experience the game not strictly strictly play it like this. I want them to be free because uh, everything comes naturally if if they enjoy the game. So now that we know like Hans's point of view on the, these kinds of things, let's move on to the other two. Let's start with Panther, who's new to RPP Ops, and. Uh, you know, you joined last weekend up on Operation. Well, I forgot. I think it was it Silver, Silver, Silver Ghost, Stallion. Silver Silver Ghost Band? Silver yeah, Stallion. Silver Ghost. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Silver remember. Ghost, Silver Ghost, or something. <laughs> but that was Silver. like Garcia, no man. Garcia is another Milsim op curator we have in uh, RPP or Squad Philippines. And so Panther, I'd, I'd like you to describe, you know, the feeling of of the first Milsim op with RPP. You know. What are the highlights, I guess, and uh, if maybe you want to talk about the lowlights about uh, the the squad op scene that we can do more because you know we this op was like a trial op uh, when we were yeah. where we were dipping our feet back into ops because we have access to servers again, right? So uh, describe, can you please describe it to us? You know how it felt to you know uh, play your first Milsim op with RPP. Uh, it was. Well, it was cool to um, play with other people since it's my first Muslim in these tactical games because I just started like a few months ago. And uh, like the mission was very good, um, the people were good, and uh, there were a few problems, but it wasn't with the, with the, with the other people, it was mine because my mic wasn't working. And then there was one Oof. part of the game where my night vision didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> like the whole game. Yeah. So just- Follow this quality the <laughs> yeah, that's that's I guess one of the problems, right, that we were talking about earlier, like having squad as the canvas, canvas for the op. Yeah. You tend to run into these things, but did like follow up question to that? Did that spoil you? Did these bugs spoil your you know experience, overall experience? experience? Yeah. yeah. Well, um, when my when my, my night vision didn't work, that was when us um. Americans um, were Russians, so like the first started when the game started out. Um, I hopped into a vehicle and then it, it just stopped working when I got out. So, I mean, it wasn't bad, but what I had to do was just follow wh- wherever the quality there is. And it, the last um, round wasn't really that good for me. Yeah. No. But I think that's where like uh, that's exactly why I I like seeing panther like despite you know running into issues I, this is why i see you i saw you as a 6 to 11 material was 
you know, you didn't yeah. complain as much. You just said, oh, oh, sh- oh shit, my night vision's not working, right? And yet you still carried on with it, you know, carried on with the mission. So I just like a real soldier. Like, yeah, just a real soldier, bro. You know, that's the exactly army what. makes do. <laughs> yeah, you know, so <laughs> I, I'm, it's a really good uh, aspect to see yeah. about you. And this is kind of the things we look for in when we when we you know recruit admins or when we recruit clan mates for six to m so yeah you know it's it's really good to see that you know even even in milsim ops you're very um you know you, th- you think on your feet you know that's that's a good thing Pero, uh i Go have ahead, another dude. question for panther right like so this is that you said that you were new to tactical gaming in general yeah uh squad is like what your first tactical game or second well um i've been Play for tactical games, which is like more realism. I started on Argo, like the free version of Arma. Uh huh. Uh, Argo, and yeah, then, yeah. Yeah, and then obviously I didn't have that much money for Arma, so I just saved up for a squad because uh, I thought it was I more see. like sort of squad material. Like I was used to that since I played Airsoft for years. Mm-hmm. So, uh-huh. yeah. All right. Well, that's neat. Well, okay. Um, what about the op made it stand out? Compared to like your regular game of squad, um, it was more planned. Um, it was different because it wasn't like just fights for tickets and caps. It was there was an actual objective that everyone needed to do. Fun, right? Yeah. yeah. So because his pubs were just like, oh, that. there's <laughs> so many objectives. Let's take every single one. Yeah. At the same That's time. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. Last question for this, though. What do you want to see more of from RPP Ops? Except, uh, you know, you can say anything here except bug fixes because that's not our. Control. <laughs> that's like not, it's our, not shit. In our control. It's not in our control. So. <laughs> yeah. You can't fix the bugs. But what else do you want to see more of? From for the ops. Yeah, yeah. From the ops. Well, <clears throat> I'd like to see more sort of, um, sort of like stuff where you do combat patrols or like sort of more um, scenarios where you have to extract something or break mm-hmm. something. Break or something. Like, yeah, or just like um, fight your way into some some place in Fallujah or something. Hands, take yeah. note. So, yeah. yeah, take note. <laughs> hands. Hands, hands, take note. Actually, I have That's one in the, my mind as well. All right, all right, go for so... it. So yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, Go for it, Rez. What else do you want to see from your <laughs> from the ops next time? <laughs> okay, I guess he's saving it. All Save right. It. Well, <laughs> good because it's your turn now. Okay, so we are going to talk to our one of our community regulars and returning RPP ops members, uh, Raziel fourteen. Uh, so you played Green Zone, right? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yes, so, uh huh. So, what stood out from that event? Uh, in Green Zone specifically, it was the way the op itself was, uh, the victory condition and defeat condition really, really stood out. It seems very simple, but what makes it different is that uh, you gotta be really careful. So to put it into perspective, the way it was crafted was is that the victory condition for the UST is to deliver a logi to the eponymous Green Zone. However, the U.S. team can lose by losing all the logies. Uh, so that made the victory condition very different. It's not a in-game mechanic. It's not a flag you capture. It's not the hundreds of tickets you have. It's three very real items in-game that can be destroyed. Some th- These logistic trucks are things that can, are vehicles that are usually destroyed in a regular game of squad. So your brain starts to uh, go on overtime thinking, oh dear, how are we going to deliver three defenseless logi trucks that can carry people and supplies to the green zone without dying? Complication. Your enemies are insurgents. What do insurgents do in squad? They put explosive IDs on their bikes, on their trucks, and run up and blow your vehicles to hell. So how now do you get it through a city that is... Uh, that has thin roads, and then when you get into the city, it's close quarter combat, and now, you said, now you gotta defy the task. Where are we going in? How are we going in? And then you execute the plan. And what makes it special was all of the unexpected events that happens when Murphy's Law strikes, because Murphy's Law always strikes when you least want it. So, 
And the funny part is that despite all, at least from my experience, the second half of the match where we were the U.S. team is everything kept going wrong. Everything kept going wrong just getting into the city. But yet the team pulled together no matter what happened. They didn't give up. They worked together to get that last Lodgy. Yes, we were down to the last Lodgy and got it through by the power of uh, just door-to-door combat, keeping the vehicles alive, the ones that we still had left. Yeah, and but it was a win. our team got like one Lodgy in while we yeah. got like, what, uh, four? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You guys are lucky. Three, three. That was yeah, really good three, though. Like, four, 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 you're yeah, just four. lucky. You're just lucky our gunner was looking the other way. It was right in front of you. <laughs> I was. forgot who it was. I forgot who it was, but I put him there specifically in case you guys were gonna do that. But no, <laughs> he was looking in the opposite direction, and I asked why. We could have ended it right there. All three yeah, logic. We were so defenseless at that point. I Jeez. know. But you can yeah, check the video. That's exactly about, how it happened. Let's talk about that. Uh, that part of the you know. The Milsim Ops aspect, yeah. You know, before we mm-hmm. move forward with Adza's questions and asking more questions for the rest of the, the other two guests we have on the podcast. Mm-hmm. You know, it's those moments you have in game that you can't exactly pull off in a regular game, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like at, at that point in time where we had only one Lodgy left and Command called Broken Arrow, basically, that, you know, whatever it takes, whatever it takes to get that Lodgy into the green zone. So what I did was I detached from my unit with two other guys, and we were clearing buildings with two four nines, and I had a two forty Bravo. So <laughs> imagine we were, clearing street, we were clearing street by street from hats, and we unlocked the kit. So everyone was playing uh sapper and hat. So in that case, you know, it was almost impossible to kind of get the lodge anywhere without almost hitting a mine, right? So we were doing really uh, meticulous, uh, you know, street clearing. And not just yeah, yeah, not just the buildings. You were those checking the, the roads things, too. Yeah, those are the kinds of things that get our adrenaline pumping. And I think Panther and I were in the same squad. Panther, we were on the same side in uh, Silver yeah. Coast. Yeah. Right. Do you remember like uh, moving up uh, on foot because you know we everything was just going to shit. The, the vehicles weren't working. Uh, yeah. Everything was just you know broken arrow time. So at that point, we were like, all right, we got to do whatever it takes to get the ball rolling and. You know, those are the things you, that don't happen in a pub match, right? I think you'd agree, Panther. So, you know, like, when Did you're you in a have pub one match, of those moments, Panther? Like, when you yeah. you have, like, a moment that was just yours during yeah. the last yeah. off? Yeah. Can you uh-huh. tell us the a first story? Off, your first off, yeah. What do you mean, like, my, like... Yeah, like, like I guess like, a, a, a moment you had that... Yeah, a you moment know, you that had, got your you know, That got your blood pumping that you're like, oh, shit, you know, this is... Uh, the, this, this is real. The, this is the uh, experience that I. Well, that was when I don't know where it was in Fallujah, but you were supposed to cross the road, and I think that was you or probably Kabul who went on first, mm-hmm. and then some and then someone shot me, um, with a machine gun, and then I went down, and then that's where I like realized if I if I got like get dead dead here, I'm gonna have to wait in the main, so I have to, like. Get it fixed up. Get it together. Yeah. A moment yeah. of tension, it's you know, that tension. really yeah. is fucking it's, beautiful, man. It's like, you know, you know, it's it's more uh, when you have death um, parameters, right? Like what Garcia said, you know, he was like, you know, if you die, you got to wait for five people, five other people to die before you get deployed again rapidly yeah. by a chopper and, or a vehicle. And, you know, you don't know when that is. So you, you tend to be more careful with your movements, right? And I think that's a the beauty of uh Milsim Ops in squad, you know, yeah. goes, you know, that that's what goes through our minds, you know, like when we're on the ground playing the game. So Yeah. Yeah. It's not like the other like unusual mm-hmm. squad games where if you die, you die, it's either you give up or just wait for somebody. It's, it's an easy task to win. Yeah. And ops, it's either it's if it's a one life op, you're done, like it's right there, or if it's just you have to wait in the base. Yeah. It's gonna be boring happens. if you have to wait. Yeah. 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 You have to wait. So you have one to be life up. So much one life up, na ba? One life up, please. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> Hans, hey. one life up, na tayo. <laughs> yeah, sure. Thank you. Yeah, Anyways, Raz, let's continue. You have a second question segment. for Raz. Raz yeah. Um. So, Sir Raz, um, how was the recent event, the last one that we just had? Uh, did you enjoy your 
return to the op scene? Hmm, to be honest, uh, I felt uh, it was bitten because it was a it was a clean op, but it was very short. But mm. I suppose that's how it is when you're just getting and you don't uh, go uh, on the deep end yet. You just stick to the shallow op. So uh, for me, uh, uh, how do you put it? Uh, the op was uh, quite simple: get in, get out. Um, there was moments of tension, of course. Uh, even we on the Russian team first round encountered a lot of problems. Some of our night visions didn't work. We flipped on the tiniest of pebbles and we couldn't get our tiger out for like almost two minutes. So it took so a realistic. From that. Yeah, so it's like, <laughs> oh God, the we were, we were doing our first up in the longest time and everything is uh, being difficult. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, other I than that, so. though, when, when we got in there, blood was pumping because... Uh, respawning isn't so easy keeping the crew together so that as much as many guns up as possible uh, carelessly crossing the road is heavily punishing as everybody's number starts going down you know oh shit are we going to be able to complete this that type of stuff so yeah uh, it was a good uh, good uh, return to ops but personally I'm looking for more complicated more well planned ops moving forward and hoping to put one out there as well Awesome, awesome. And since you said that, be more specific. What do you want to see more of from the future ops mm -hmm. that we will run? So, uh, similar to, actually, it's also what I've been thinking. Um, Panther Atley mentioned it. More of, uh, how do you put this, isolated story like ops, for example. What I got churning in my head is uh, continuing to Fallujah, if I could just direct it, uh, Maybe around two fire teams of I'm not sure. Do we have like a scenario where it's MEA versus insurgents? Do we have anything like that? I think it, I think there's an invasion map for that. Yeah. On okay. Fallujah. Yeah. Do we have? Uh, yeah. Okay. So let's say an invasion map MEA versus insurgents, but the scenario is more of let's say two two squads worth of MEA uh, patrols. So 18 guys have to go on this specific patrol route to clear out insurgent caches, aka fobs. And uh, as they're going on patrol, of course, it will be they'll run into insurgents. So the objective is, is they, if they can clear the three FOBs and get out back to their base in one piece, then they win. So it's going to be a more of a prolonged op. Many chances for door-to-door -door combat. Um, the, the thrill of, at least for the insurgent side, to use all the dirty playbooks of insurgents. ID drones as in to make life a living hell for those ME I mean, patrols. They're already underfunded. There's friendship. only there's here. They're they're uh underfunded. They only have G3s. Maybe I'll Jeez. give them a Jeep, but then they have to watch every corner. And I'm going to encourage insurgents all dirty tactics. Put IEDs by doors, use drone <laughs> fobs, blockade the roads, as in just to make it a living hell for those two squads to get the job done. So all I'm thinking now is how many do I want to put in the insurgents? How many do I want to put in MEA? Well, the MEA, the main actors will be the two squads going on that, I'll call it Operation Milk Run, because they're clearing, they're supposed to clear out the, the, the city, like a, res, a, a like like a monthly cleaning of the ruins of Fallujah, just keep the insurgents out, but it's like, you know, they just come back like cockroaches, so you got to clean them out. So yeah. it's, their, it's their turn, fresh yeah. out of whatever military academy they came from, and I'm thinking... If it's two squads, maybe the insurgents can be like maybe two times their size to give the feeling of, oh my god, that's a lot of insurgents. If I think the server balance allows that, can we do that? Like yeah, uh, 15 to 30? Like, and then maybe uh, 18 main actors in the op and then support actors to run vehicles or resupply. So if they die, um, they'd have to, like similar to Garcia 5, but then there will be a dedicated uh, transport truck driver to bring them forward. There will be no uh, rally points. There will be no fobs. They have to go from their main, resupply, drop them off, and regroup. So it's going to be a long op. It's going to be a long op, many potential for chaos. The only thing I'm thinking about is the limitations. How many so I love how you did this get? brainstorm on the podcast so you could just go back here and listen to yourself and take all the notes. <laughs> I know, right? It's, it's, <laughs> <for a> media. <laughs> it's perfect. But right. yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. So long ops where uh, there is wear and tear, there is thrill of death, and uh, action all the way from beginning to end, and then the quiet moments. It's the quiet moments that's going to be fun. The, oh, the one thing I'm <laughs> truly excited about in the context of you know the, the ops that we do is mm -hmm. when Operation Harshdoor stuff drops. Because that one, that, that one is like just straight up going to be a sandbox, right? 
Yeah. Well, pretty it's much. Modern, modern potential, modern yeah. potential. So, modern potential uh, like, I know Hans and Raz follow OHD, right? Uh, Panther, yeah. have you been following Operation Harsh Dog? Stop. I'm just curious. Yeah, I've, I've right. been I've been looking up some videos and right, I'm excited for it to come out. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. So, anyways, that's the next topic we have on today's list. Is you know we'll talk about the potential of this new tactical shooter that can I guess what it can bring to our community as RPP, you know, as an ops. Uh, yeah, and you know, besides the obvious yeah. hope for Filipinos everywhere, and yeah. that it's free as it's shit. Free. <laughs> it's free as shit. We hope no hackers. <laughs> Let's hope no hackers. Walang didas, walang didas, walang didas. I mean, it's like... unity. It's gonna be ha. <laughs> oh, for the hackers, yeah. Sure. <laughs> oh my god. But, but you but, know, yeah. let's, let's talk about the potential of this game for the ops that we run, right? Yeah. It's a there's potential for localization, for example, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, people could come up with mob packs that, you know, that represent the, the city Philippine map. Armed Forces. <laughs> like, Kubao, yeah. Kubao City yeah. map. Yeah. Kubao City <laughs> map. <You know? laughs> like, yeah. hold an op in Monumento Station, LRT. Oh, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, with the okay. actual LRT trains running. <laughs> <laughs> so for added realism, they're not running. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> too real, man. Too real. Yeah, but uh, let's tickle the uh, brains of the uh, curators here. Like, what kind of possibilities do you see OHD having for the ops that we want to run in the future? Hans, um, as I followed the uh, OHD, uh, Blue Jake in, uh, explained on modding, specifically on modding. So he he's giving he's giving us the tools on uh, on to mod the. The games are like the he's maps. dropping an SDK ahead oh, of the, yeah. the game, right? Yeah, so it, when yeah, it, once it drops, the bar, every mod will be available to everyone oh, yeah. who wants to play it. So that's awesome. The yeah. Anyways, continue, Hans. Sorry. Um, what's beautiful about it is, oh, uh, if we got modders in the community, we can uh, remake some some locations or some scenarios that happen in the country, like for example in Marawi. Yeah. Uh, what we can do is we can also interview from um, military personnel on how and what happened on Marawi, and we can implement. Them. Yeah, we can implement those um, mods based on their experience. So we we can re- relive that moment uh, when OHD comes out. So that's what's exciting about OHD. And I think that's oh, yeah. what that's one thing that uh, I guess that hasn't uh, gotten Filipinos hooked onto, for example, tactical games is the lack of I guess local local representation, right? So, oh yeah, very uh, important. Like, I mean, the moment people see na the Scout Rangers or the LRR are in a video game, right? I remember yeah. when Medal of Honor Warfighter dropped. And there was a map in Basilan, the map. And everyone was like, whoa, what the fuck? Dude, that made evening <laughs> news for some fucking reason. Yeah, dude. I know, right? That I mean that uh like I, I'm not a fan of EA, but that gave me a hard on when I was younger because I love to see I'd love to play that level. Yeah, same and, man, you know, clickbait. Uh, yeah. Clickbait titles, yeah. <laughs> clickbait titles <laughs> like you know, if they were the if they if you have those YouTubers now who who Pinoy bait, then that was like Pinoy baiting at for the tactical Filipino back in yeah, 2015. Right? No, earlier pa. 2009? Holy crap, it's old, that old. old 20, no, 2011 or something. But it's a really, it's a really old game. Like a, you know, Warfighter is an old, old game. Old. And Holy I think God. that's something that uh, got like a lot of my friends to buy Warfighter back in the PS3. Just for Anyways, that one level. For that one or two <laughs> levels that are in Basilan while you were playing Navy Seals and you had an MP7 and you were just shredding insurgents the right? um, it wouldn't that that have been cooler if you were playing as the LRR the scout rangers you know clearing out the ruins of whatever you know torn down city marawi or whichever special forces unit was assigned to that area and you can make a story about it and get people saying that holy crap you know we're being represented in a video game you know and i think yeah. that's what gets people uh hooked into arma as well is because they have a dedicated modding team to you know to work on their 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 uniforms their uh i guess their maps so it, it all works out for them but you know like what han said all those tools will be available to us so if we have modders we can reach out and say that 
you know, um, this is pretty cool, right? So uh, why don't we work on a mod to help us, um, I guess, start up the, the Filipino scene in video games, especially the tactical scene, because uh, I don't think we've been represented in video games as much as we'd like to be. Yeah. You know, yeah. Ironically, we have... we have the deadliest stealth rangers on the planet. They don't yeah. need tech. Yeah, exactly, right? So, yeah. it would have been really cool, right? fuck that. We have eyes. <laughs> we have eyes, man. Anyway, so, Raz, what do you our think? We'll smell our enemies miles so away. So, we'll, we'll, we'll ask Raz what he thinks, and we'll ask Panther what he thinks about uh, OHD's potential, you know, if he's not going to be modding or curating as a player, uh, yeah. if ever. So, Raz, maybe we can start with you. Uh, Sure, I mean, now that I hear, uh, that's news to me that they're releasing the mod SDK, it... Uh, it really looks like uh, OHD is going to be pulling out all the stops to get itself released, which is great. Uh, I mean, now, now maybe now somebody can put to reality that one Reddit post many, many years ago, where imagine this scenario: the Mexican cartel versus the Popo. Now imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> it would be hilarious, and, and the Mexican cartel's objective is to get the uh, get the product past the border. Isn't that gonna be hilarious? So it's like a escort mission. So you got this like giant slow ass truck. It, it was it was a hilarious Reddit post, but they were really putting thought onto it. Now, imagine if you're on the Mexican cartel side, you have to get it through this route, and you need to get the product essay over to the border to bring it to our uh, distributors. And then the Pope <laughs> side, they would have just like zombies, and then they, their weapons are like M9s. Uh, M4, just basic shit, police, police level stuff, and it, it was such a hilarious idea. Now somebody might actually put it uh, to real life, and it's gonna be a hilarious scenario, right? So it's like, uh, do not let the popo get our our distributor. They're capturing our cocaine side. Don't let them get the cocaine. <laughs> They're capturing the point. <laughs> it's gonna be a hilarious scenario. There are gonna be many funny things, and I mean, here local representation. The what if scenario of the conspiracy theorist, the um, neighbors from across the sea finally decide to invade us. Then the defense of Manila Bay, it invasion map. Here we go. Well, <laughs> All the way to Palace. Oh. The defense of Intramuros. Yeah, the defense of Intramuros. We can make a, a conscription yeah, but, yeah. army mod. <laughs> uh, so, so you, so you would have the uh, regular. If we can put factions, we can put our uh, our military and the uh, special forces. We can even put the conscripted militia force, my reserves. Oh my god, there are many <laughs> options. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so, I, th I think I'll put it there. How about you, Panther? What are your thoughts? Well, for the potential of OHD, like um, sort of in the category where like like normal games, just casual games. Um, I think there will be more people since it's sort of it's it's free. Yeah. And then, but, but, um, it would be like, it'll take a while before people actually that, like, get into it, especially like people in my age, because I don't really know a lot of people that play like tactical games. So I think there'll be more people, but for like, it's gonna be easier getting... for you to get your friends to play it now that there's no paywall, you know? Yeah. And, but, uh, I think it, it'll be a while till like a lot of people get into it. Yeah, you can just tell people that, yeah, hey, come join us. It's it's like Counter Strike, but it's not Counter Strike. Yeah, it's not really <laughs> but it's like, bro, it's like Valorant, bro. <laughs> yes, yeah, but it's Valorant on steroids. It's Valorant on crystal meth, the <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just like the hard thing of like telling my friends um how like how does squad work? Well, there there's no game really that sort of is similar to what they play. So I can't really explain much. So I think if OHD c comes up and then people get into it, they might go into squad or armor more. Yeah, mm. that's a good point. Actually, that's, that's a very good know? point because like, yeah. uh, there is no uh game that kind of you can kind of compare what we you know like to the games we play. For example, like yeah. how can you compare Ground Branch or Zero Hour and Service Sandstorm to any other game? Mm -hmm. Because like you can say that oh it's like Counter Strike. But you die in like two hits. Counter yeah. Strike is like a bullet spongy game where if you have armor, you take a few shots, so you can Don't only get the down pro by players you that. Yeah, yes. you know, like in the pro scene, you have a guy running around with the deagle, headshotting everyone with one one clip or one magazine. That's all he needs yeah. to down an entire enemy team. He doesn't even reload. So yeah. you know, like how how do you compare those kinds of things 
to like the games we play and the tactical genre. So that's a good point you made, Panther. Like I guess OHD will kind of be the baseline of games to compare. It will uh, be the gateway the drug. Game. They it will get be the gateway yeah. drug. <laughs> yeah. And also yeah. for like the ops and more scenarios, um, I think it'll be more flexible if if it's sort of like this like a sandbox. So like like what you guys said like about um the Philippines sort of terrain or you can make up more scenarios like um raid this place and then after like twenty minutes there's a bunch of insurgents coming your way trying to kill you. So yeah, I think it would be cool for the ops. Yeah. Definitely. That local flavor. Yeah, local know. flavor. Yeah. Local flavor. I mean, what about the Pinoy Corpo Wars in a far distant universe? The yeah. Corpo one. So the 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 C family versus the Anong Kalavani Ayala. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Corpo Wars. <laughs> Corpo Wars. Corpo Wars. As in, yung main Being base like, nyo is Ayala. Being yung main base is SM. Diba? Saban sila dun sa Noglorieta. O, oh, diba? HDSM, SM, Aura. Yung mga deployment nila, yung mga pad pow na... Is this just, <laughs> just gonna be Battlefield Hard, then? Wait. If we have a... If we have a mod... If I knew how to mod, diba? My first mod for, uh... I guess, for, um... OHD would be a pad pow mod. Yeah, parang PMC, pero sec sec you. Like literal na sec you. <laughs> sec you. So yung uh, armament sec you. <laughs> yung may shot gun na shot gun. Yung may shot gun. Or may 38 na revolver. <laughs> Nakalawang, yeah. may kalawang. Let's hear right? from hands this time though. Yeah, yeah, okay. The mission curator himself. God yeah. himself. Tell us. <laughs> Zeus. Hands. Hmm. Ah. Uh, I'm I'm really thinking about um because OHD is on Unreal Unreal Engine. If I'm is it is it is it? Uh, I'm not you know what? We can sure. confirm that's, that. Yeah. That's, Let's Google did that. Did you say it was Unity though? OHD Engine. I think it was Unity. I think it was it's Unreal Unreal Engine. Double check. Uh, yeah, it's, oh, it's Unreal Engine. Yeah, yeah because Engine 4, I yeah. remember the video that he said it was gonna be run on potatoes, and yeah, I immediately Unity, thought, I thought it was Unity. Unity is potato engine. <laughs> Unity is potato engine, man. Yeah, Boy, yeah, don't yeah. underestimate Unity, though. So yeah, yeah. Rust is amazing, yeah. but you know. <laughs> um, continue, uh, Hans, please. Um, I plan to enroll in the course also on Great. Unreal Engine. Let's go. Ooh, Let's yeah. all learn Unreal. Yeah, because. This this is something we we want to create uh, to bring pride on our country. Yeah, mm. by hands we've talked about it before. Yeah, so, uh, like, yeah. we've always wanted. You to showed make, me uh, that you you're taking a course. Yeah, like, yeah. Ooh, I, I want to well, I want to take a course also. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's because here in the Philippines, uh, I think there's no like, a local game made on Milsim. Sure. Or, yeah, Milsim. Ah, well, yeah. Well, Milsim. Well, Milsim. No, no, Milsim. No, no, no. You've got like RPGs. Yeah, yeah, RPGs. Simply I mean, put, our culture does not make tactical gaming marketable. What is marketable right now in the media is infidelity, politics, and sex. That's <laughs> marketable. And God, yeah, actually, yeah. breaching people's doors down does not turn on the common Filipino populace at this time. Hey, I, and I that's our goal. A, a provin- ang provinciano ran for years. <laughs> that's our goal, bro. Door <laughs> breaching mm. to be yeah. the number one. Yeah, so... <laughs> Yeah, we. Yeah, but you know, Cardo de Lisi shrugs off bullets like the Terminator. So <laughs> does that count as you know, <laughs> tactical gaming? <laughs> da- daming ammo, daming ammo. Dude, <laughs> full auto patas. Hindi sumasabog yung barrel ng M4 nila. Grabe, dude. <laughs> hindi na yung chamber. Hindi na stuck yung oh. bala. <laughs> hindi na stuck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's but something yeah. to look forward to. Um, yeah, the, uh, I, I, yeah, I really the want potential. to work with you guys on, yeah, on this. Uh, something, yeah. uh, something new to bring out on our side. Yeah. yeah, so instead of uh, dreaming that it's going to happen, we might as well be the ones to start. Yeah. 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 I think, like, I mean, uh, yeah. Sorry, guys. So good shit's going to come in. Keep watching Radio RPP to get like the latest and greatest updates from our community mothers. What yeah, about you, exactly. Panther? Or, since yeah. you're still young, why don't you uh, go yeah, part? Why don't you learn Unreal? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got time, bro. Come say it's gonna be marketable, man. Just letting you know now, man. It's gonna be all about the IT skills. Hey, man, I I 
took I wish I patient arts and I regret it. I have no money making skills. <laughs> take IT, Panther. Take IT. Coming from a 29 year old man, take IT. <laughs> That was the that's one of the points. Change, yeah. Oh, oh let's, go. let's 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 go. let us Come oh, on, come on. <laughs> yeah, but to wrap this up before we pressure Panther into taking IT right now, um, for the three of you, one last question. What is one statement you'd like to give people who are still on the fence about trying tactical games and getting involved in Milsim events like what we do right here at RPP? So let's start with uh, Raz. This time, this time, yeah. What do you want to tell uh, our listeners back home? And just get on their PCs and download Squad right now. Go Ultra ahead guy. and just uh, give it a try. It's uh, definitely going to be a unique experience. Uh -huh. And it's going to be the people that you meet. So go ahead and uh, give it a shot. Uh, you never know what friends you'll pick up, what new experiences you're going to have. Variety is the spice of life. Give it a shot. If it ain't for you, then that's okay. Just that's great dating it. advice, Raz. You can refund it. Yeah. Yeah, you can refund like it and buy Valorant or whatever. Valorant skins. <laughs> All right, skins. Hans, what about you? Um, yeah, give it a shot, guys. Uh, um, try to research or join groups. Ask people who are part of the community. Yeah, look for Bean and <laughs> Tan Man. <laughs> yeah, look for... Um, check out some podcasts on the RPP. Uh... Um, you you guys will know more about the milsim genre, the about the genre yeah. of milsims, yeah. and you'll become a milsim like us. Nah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, 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 Spending money on some stuff that were like gun skins and like going in Call of Duty Mobile, yeah. looking for yes. girls to be with with one week relationships. Oof. Definitely better than that. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was <laughs> holy crap! Uh, that was loaded. That wow, was loaded. <laughs> it, it looks like it it was meant for someone. <laughs> 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 Yeah, go Get some ice water from the tindahan for that burn. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was also in like sort of in one in the time where I got my laptop and then I was thinking of do, should I do Arma or should I do Squad? My friend was trying to tell me to do Arma, but but when I watched like a bunch of Squad gameplays, it's it's definitely more like it's more like com basically more friendly people, I should say. Just yeah. go for it. It's really fun. Yeah. Not to say that A3PH isn't friendly. They just take it yeah. to a whole new level than there. So it's they, they're very nice people. It's just that you have to like, people, to their, people. They have, they're great people. people. Like, like, I, I got a lot of them are my friends. Then, and you know, you just have to take it to the next level when you're playing with them compared to like with us at squad. Uh, we just like you to can pop around, around in squad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but so you're not, you know, but so you're not playing in a scrim with us with the boys, the boy. Yeah. It's not like a competitive match, then yeah, yeah. you know. Just be, don't pick Mark. Man. And don't and don't have me as a driver or a gunner. You'll be <laughs> fine. You know I mean? Yeah. Fuck that. Uh, he sucks at this game and he runs the so, server. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And All right. that about wraps it up for Radio yeah. RPP episode number three. Yes. That was a very good episode. Sorry for being bit. late, guys, by the way. We got busy with life and you know, we don't get paid for this, but we love to talk about tactical games so and if you uh, have questions don't forget to drop it down, there. down below or you can go into our discord talk to us right there we'll talk to you whenever we're online uh just don't be the kind of guy who goes inside the server asking for everything and saying Bala kayo dyan, and just leaving randomly <laughs> so <laughs> how are we gonna how are we gonna help you with that you know like just give us some time and sometimes we sleep sleep in but 
Yo, Hans, Raz, Panther, thank you for being on the show. Do you guys have any other comments you want to make or any other statements you want to make before we end? Shout outs for you. Oh, good. Go ahead, good. Panther. Oh, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, very uh, much, thank you guys. Yes. Thank you guys so much. Thank you to everyone who stuck with us. Uh, this has been Radio RPP. Signing off. Signing off. Peace. Peace out, guys. Ready, set, go. This has been Radio RPP. Over, Over and out. out. All right. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. Awesome.